Good morning. It's a little bit before 10 o'clock. We are uh, about 40 minutes from where I live. We are in southern Idaho. We are in Massacre Rocks State Park. This area is rich in Oregon Trail history. The Oregon Trail passed through this part of Idaho. We'll be seeing a couple of Oregon Trail related uh, places today. But first I wanted to come down to the river and take a look at it. This is the Snake River. This is basically the major river of Idaho, I'd say. So as I said, this, this place is called Massacre Rocks State Park because when the, uh, when the westward migrating pioneers came through this area, uh, as you can see, there are a lot of rock formations and uh, you know, I think they, they just felt that it was an easy place to be ambushed. And so they called these rocks Massacre Rocks. Uh, there was never actually a massacre by the, by the Native Americans here, but there actually was one further, I think further east, uh, not too far from here. Okay, we are at trailhead number two in the park here. We are going to uh, some old wagon tracks of the Oregon Trail, where you can see the actual original route of the Oregon Trail. Um, I have to cross underneath the interstate. The interstate is literally 50 feet to my right here. Got a little peekaboo view of the river down there. So the Snake River here will feature prominently in the next couple days of videos. This is a three day trip, all of which will be in southern Idaho. I'm making my way west toward Boise, toward the capital of Idaho. Central and northern Idaho are very green and lush. Uh, but southern Idaho is, uh, is desert. It's high desert. All right, we seem to have reached our destination. These are just some informative signs about the, the Oregon Trail and California Trail. These are the original trail ruts. Oregon Trail, California Trail. So it's kind of hard to tell what we're looking at here. We have the, the modern trail, and I think this trench here is, uh, is the original the original trail and again here we have the the trail the modern trail the hiking trail and i think this here is the old oregon trail just think how different this place would have been in 1850. obviously the big change here is the interstate you can drive across the country in just a couple days now you don't have to spend four months so we are now about 10 minutes up the road. This is uh, another section of the state park, but it's not connected. Uh, but you still need to pay if you didn't pay at the other place. Anyway, this is called Register Rock. It's a giant rock, a big old boulder, that immigrants on the Oregon and California Trail would carve their names on. People would camp here. There's a creek right here, so it provided good a good spot for animals. Here we go, this is the good stuff over here. 1862, 1872. It's a shame they have this chain link fence around it, but I guess they've gotta protect it from idiots somehow. Oh, they have, <laughs> they have an opening in the chain link I just noticed. For pictures, I guess. Then there's something else interesting on this little boulder just over here. I don't know how well this will come through. Oh yeah, there it is. It's an Indian head. Apparently there's a preacher's head too. I'm not quite sure where that is. But the sign here says that it was done in 1866. When he was seven years old, he carved the Indian head. He was on the Oregon Trail, and then in 1908, after becoming a sculptor, he returned to review his work. That's when he dated the rock under the Indian carving. I don't see a date down there, but there's his name. Man, he did that when he was seven years old. That's better than what I could do now. Oh, and I see the, I see the preacher head. 
Can you see that? He's got a hat on, a round hat, He's got a nose and a mouth. Overall, nice little park, worth the stop. Gonna get back in the car now, head about an hour, hour and a half west to our next destination and I will let you know once we get there. All right, we are at Cauldron Lynn. This is on the Snake River, same river we were at earlier. This is a spot where the whole of the Snake River is squished down into a 40 foot squeeze somewhere over here and there's a waterfall. You can see all the bleached white rock down here. When the water is high, when the river is high, that's all covered, that's all underwater. Anyway, let's go drive down to this spot and then poke around and see what the area looks like. All right, we are here. Sorry about the wind. As always, it's always here and I can't control it. This is looking down into the canyon. This is, this is pretty crazy. It's a very deep little canyon. And this is the entire Snake River right here. Not only is this interesting and beautiful aesthetically and geologically, but it has historical significance too, this spot. In 1811, a party was attempting to cross the continent overland from, I guess, Missouri is where they started. And they were trying to get to Oregon to establish a, a fort and a trading post at the mouth of the Columbia River. In 1811, this was less than a decade after Lewis and Clark, if I have my dates right. I think Lewis and Clark were like 1803 or four or something like that. So this was very early on in the exploration of the American West. And so uh, this party's plan was to get to the Snake River, which they did. They got to the headwaters of the Snake River. And then their plan was to, was to canoe down the Snake River and follow it into the Columbia River and then follow that to the mouth of the Columbia River where they would establish their their trading outpost at what is today, I believe, Astoria, Oregon. And so uh, they made it this far and they had lost a canoe and one of their people died in some rapids up the river, but they made it to this spot, to Cauldron Lynn, and they were like, you know what? It's not worth it. They got here, saw that and thought, there's no way we can continue down this river. And so from here, they got rid of their canoes. They hoofed it overland up to Oregon. Pretty cool story, pretty interesting spot in, in the history of the West and the exploration of the West. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to, to more information about that. Super cool spot. I'm really glad I came here. Um, it is, let's see here, not even 1.30 yet. It's 1.23, which is great. I'm gonna go fishing. So I'm gonna drive like, I think about half an hour to a creek. I'm gonna be camping in that general area, so I'll see you again once I'm at a campsite and have a nice cozy spot for the night. Hello, hello. Pretty cool spot I've found here to camp. I like this canyon. It's a pretty small, narrow canyon, but has a really good road running through it. As you saw in the drone footage that I just took, there's nothing else out here, no one else out here. I'm the only one camped out here. I did go fishing, fished for a couple hours. It wasn't enormously successful, but I did catch three fish, so that's definitely better than nothing. It's dinner time now. I have about half an hour of daylight left, so I'm gonna hurry up and make a couple peanut butter sandwiches and enjoy those. Hope you enjoyed today's adventures. Uh, I had a good time today. It's always fun to explore new places, and I haven't really been to this, these, uh, these areas before, and so it's great, and I'm happy to have the chance to share them with you guys.
I slept well last night. When you saw me last, I was uh, at a campsite in a canyon and uh, it was a chilly night, but I was warm and cozy in my sleeping bag. Slept for about 10 hours, which is one thing I really love about these cooler weather camping trips. So this hump here is a ramp used by Evil Knievel to try to jump across the Snake River Canyon. It was in 1974, Evil Knievel, famous stuntman, he uh, had like a rocket-powered motorcycle, and this is the ramp that he took off of. Let's hike up the ramp here. I'm sorry, it is extremely windy. There are like 30 mile an hour winds right now. This is the top of the ramp. the canyon he tried to jump across, the Snake River Canyon. It was unsuccessful. Uh, his parachute, one of his little parachutes, opened up soon after he launched. And that created a lot of drag and so he didn't make it all the way across, but uh, he survived. Let's go down to the rim of the canyon here and get a view actually looking down to the river. There it is. That is the Snake River. But yeah, apparently Evil Knievel's parachute opened up somewhere over here, it malfunctioned, and then he drifted back down to the water, or to the, uh, to the edge of the, uh, of the river, to the bank of the river down there. There's even a little sign here. You can pause the video if you want to read the whole thing, but the most interesting thing to me here is that it says he invested nearly a million dollars and leased 300 acres for $35,000 for the crowd and legal permits for the jump. And apparently it was a big commercial bust. That's what the Wikipedia page said about the jump anyway. All right, we're leaving town now. It's just too windy out there to spend too much time to loiter. So we're leaving town, gonna go about half an hour, 35 minutes west of here to another, uh, another spot of interest. Unfortunately, the gorge and this little pedestrian bridge out here is right next to the interstate, so again, that ruins the ambiance a bit. is steep. Holy cow. There's a little trail that keeps going. I think it'll lead to a viewpoint where we can get a better view of the waterfall that's directly below the bridge. Wow, that is straight down there. And there's the waterfall. On to the next spot. Well, it's an hour and a half later. Surprise, surprise, it's still windy, and I'm at a pretty spectacular spot. If you thought that last spot was a steep and narrow canyon, let me show you this. This is Bruno Canyon, and down at the bottom there is the Bruno River. It's just like flat, gently rolling land, and then all of a sudden, boom, this massive gouge in the surface of the earth. Crazy. 
Interestingly, there are some little dirt roads that, that lead north and south along kind of the edge of the canyon here. I could drive out onto one of those and camp right on the edge of the canyon, which would be an unbelievable campsite, a, a crazy place to camp. But, like I said, it's not in the cards. It's still too early today to camp. I'm gonna drive about an hour and a half now to, I think it's about an hour and a half, to, um, well, to the west. I need to go around this giant canyon and go to the west here and set myself up for where I'm gonna be tomorrow. Okay, finally found a campsite. Six o'clock, about an hour of daylight left. Yeah, here's a view of camp. Really not a whole lot out here. And I'll see you guys in the morning when I'm on my way hiking down uh, the trail to our next destination. Good morning. It's eight o'clock, I've been up since about 6.30. Basically just waiting for the sun to come out and for it to get a little bit warmer. It's a little bit later now, the sun has actually peaked out over the mountains. Gonna have some yogurt and granola for breakfast. Put the granola in the yogurt and we will hit the road. It's a big cow. All right, it's 9.30, I've been taking my time, getting ready, waiting for the temperature to creep up a little bit. And I'm heading down into this canyon that you can kind of see over there. This is a wilderness area that I'm entering. The boundary is just on the other side of the trailhead here. And I've come here for a couple of reasons. First is just because it's a wilderness area and I like visiting wilderness areas. And this should be a really, uh, really pretty hike going down into the canyon and the views in the canyon and, and from the canyon rim should be really nice. But second, and as you can tell by the paraphernalia strapped to me here, I don't know if you can see that, I'm going fishing. I think it's about two and a half miles each way and pretty steep, pretty steep once I get to the canyon rim. Well, I'm at the bottom. That was a surprisingly moderate hike. And the trail was uh, pretty clear and well-defined and everything. This is just an, uh, an incredible place. This is spectacular. You can hear the creek down here. This section is a little bit hidden by the vegetation along the bank. I'm heading uh, over this way. I saw a pool along these cliffs. So I'm gonna go over there and start fishing there and then work my way upstream. If you wanna see the full video, go check out my fishing channel. I assume it'll be up before this video is up, so I'll link to it if I can. But yeah, hopefully I catch a fish and I'll meet back up with you once I'm done fishing for an hour or two. Well, it's a few hours later now. It's 1.45. I've had some of the best few hours of fishing of my life, caught 66 fish. I mean, what do you, what do you even say to that? It's just unbelievable fishing. I'm uh, gonna change out of my waders and my wading boots here and back into my hiking shoes and I'm uh, gonna hoof it out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm just gonna end it here. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite part was gonna head home tonight. So this is the end of this uh, little three-day trip. Again, let me know what your favorite part was and uh, I'll see you in the next one.